Um, ladies and gentlemen, so what we have here is uh, two points that we're identifying the slope. Um, as I mentioned, there was some mistakes that happened with this, so I want to make sure I go over this and so therefore you guys can remember exactly on this formula because there was some mistakes when doing the slope, uh, when doing the slope formula. The first thing, ladies and gentlemen, is you know, we have two points. And when we're identifying the slope, the slope is between two points, whatever these two points um, you know, may be. But remember, when, when we're graphing something, when we look at you know, the slope, we only need two points to identify the slope. But what the slope represents for a line is it represents the change between the two points as vertically change, as the vertical change, and the horizontal change. So how far is it horizontally and vertically between any two points? Yes? Is this an example, or is this actually what you remember to do? This is your example. So um, when we're identifying what the slope is, basically, you know, I know there's things like rise over run and, you know, f and trying to memorize the formula. But if you guys can just think of slope as the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates, it's the change vertically over the change horizontally between any two points. And remember, we talked about change is going to be the difference, right? It's the difference between two values. So I look at to find the change between, um, so when I have two points, I want to make sure I label my two points so I can accurately make sure I'm identifying the change between my y-coordinates. And we also want, to, or my x and y-coordinates, it's also helpful then to identify or to differentiate between the two coordinate points by uh, providing them subscripts. That's all the subscripts do is just allow us to differentiate between them. Now, if I want to find the change in the y-coordinates, I'm simply going to subtract them, y2 minus y1, and then x2 minus x1 where a lot of times we use m to represent our slope. So I do 3 minus 8 divided by 1 fourth minus 5 fourths. All right, we are going to be doing a lot of problems with fractions today, because um, I want to get you guys a lot of practice going over them, making sure that you guys are still remembering our operations. Um, also, please remember, guys, I didn't do a problem here with the negative. But remember, another key important point that a lot of students made a mistake is you know if, if this was like a negative 8, make sure you put parentheses around that. So it's minus a negative. All right? It's not a negative 8, so we don't need to worry about it. But be very careful with the use of your parentheses. 3 minus 8 is going to be a negative 5. Uh, 1 fourth minus 5 fourths, they have the same denominator, so I can subtract them, is going to be a negative 4 fourths. Negative 4 fourths is just going to be negative 1. So it's negative 5 divided by negative 1, which equals positive 